People love the, the NWA stories. TK Kirkland was on Vlad this week, and the topic was, would Dre have been a success without Easy e What are your thoughts on that? The question is, would Easy e been a success without Dre? Ooh, talk about it. That's the flip, okay? Dre was doing Dre before he met it, but before Easy decided he wanted to mm. be a rapper. People okay. forget. People forget right. that Easy was not trying to be a rapper. That was not his goal in life. He kind of got pushed into that. Dre always wanted to be a producer. Dre, at that time, before Dre blew up, his goal was to be bigger than Herbie Lovebug, who was the main guy out of New York producing Salt and Pepper, kid playing mm -hmm. cats like that. That was his his goal in life, to be bigger than Herbie Lovebug. Y'all mm -hmm. don't know who Herbie Lovebug is, most of y'all. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember the video. Who I'm talking about, huh? Yeah, he he one of the he had one of the first videos on MTV, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Herbie Lovebug was a was a major player producer when it came to Salt and Pepper, Kid and Play, and a few other, and I think maybe even Fat Boy. Now Curtis Blow produced Fat Boys. Yeah, so, I, I'm getting it. my bad. I'm getting him confused with Herbie Hancock, but I know exactly who Herbie Lovebug is. Yeah, and uh, in fact, if you see Salt and Pepper uh, uh, movie, he he was dating one of the girls at mm -hmm. one point in time. I think it was mm -hmm. Salt. And that's what, you know, that was his thing. Easy was trying to get into the record executive business. He wasn't trying to be a rapper, but because the groundwork had already been laid that you can own a record label and still be a part of the group. Cause nobody was doing that until somebody else did it. Okay. Well, nobody's trying to be no group and be, in a, uh, be a, a group leader and own a label at the same time. So once you saw it can be done, it was like, okay, maybe I'll try it. And it, it was supposed to be in, in, people ain't paying attention, man. <laughs> people ain't paying attention. Mm -hmm. Dude, if you saw them, that's, that's one of the few parts of the movie that was accurate. Easy was not trying to be a rapper. Easy was basically a shy dude. Very shy, mm -hmm. okay? Very quiet. But once he got comfortable with, with the eat, with the, when Eric was up, Eric was a quiet dude. Once he got comfortable with the Easy E character, he embraced it. Me and Easy sat in my house one day. We sit on, we sit on my deck. I said, "Man, how long are you going? How long are you going to uh, sell this Easy character, Doc?" He said, "As long as they buy it." <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> why the fuck? Oh, they why the hell am I stop? <laughs> how long are you going to sell this Easy character, man? As long as they buy it, as long as they buy it, Nonzo. You know, you know me. Wow. I'm gonna say whatever they want to buy. I love that. Okay. Damn. That's mm -mm -mm. what he told me because I knew I, when you know people, man. You know, I never. Here's the part: is I knew Eric because I knew after I dealt with Eric. Mm -hmm. I didn't deal with Easy that much. You follow me? Yep. They, they called him Easy, but he was Eric. I called him Eric. Okay, I called him Easy from time to time, but mostly I called him Eric. All right, and it just when you know when you watch somebody, you watch a butterfly evolve from a caterpillar to a butterfly, you still look at it like a butterfly. Nigga, you still a butterfly mm -hmm. to me. And that's where that's what that's the kind of the part. Where I never really made the adjustment, nigga. You still butterflies with me. I still know you as butterflies. You, you mean uh, caterpillars? I don't know you as butterflies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know you as caterpillars. We was all caterpillars together. Okay. So yes, you may have gotten some, went into a cocoon and came out this right here, but I know where your, where, where your caterpillar shell is. Hmm. Damn. I knew you and you were pulling fifty dollars out the out the sock and all that, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was a, that was a common <laughs> that was a common drug dealer move, mm -hmm. okay? Because most drug dealers didn't want you to know they had no money. Because back then, if you knew you had money, everybody would hit you up. Man, me old two dollars. Man, I ain't got no money, man. I ain't got no money. Um, I got I got I got ten dollars, man. He gonna take this here. And if you were the crackhead, or, or, or especially back then, because cats was coming through with shit all the time. 
I mean, back then in the crack era, oh man, come on, dude. <laughs> you 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 had to keep a couple of hundred around the house because at, at nine o'clock, ten o'clock at night, somebody might come through with some good shit. Okay, and yeah, I was wrong for buying that shit. I was wrong as hell. But every once in a while, yeah, it was some deals you just couldn't pass out. So if you on the street and if you selling shit like that, you selling rock or whatever, and they bringing you, you know, blow pumps or speakers or whatever they bring you, the last thing you want to do have a crackhead do is see you got some money. So you mm. put change in your pocket so you can flee them off. Okay, but if you had to go recop, you kept your recop money in your in your uh, in your sock. That's all. Mm. Or you just, mm. say you just say you just made some money. You stick it in your sack, keep from getting jacked. All of those are possibilities. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all of those are possibilities. It was a different time, man. It was a different time, dude. It, it mm. um, dude. It was really. It, it was. I did an interview today with my girl Big Les. Oh, and, nice! Uh, in fact, I'm gonna do her. I'm interviewing Big Les Thursday. But I, Beautiful. Morning, because she can't do it at six o'clock. I'm gonna do the interview and probably play it back later on or something like that, man. I'll probably just play it back later. This time, I'm, unlike what I did with DOC, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I record that shit. Um. Uh. uh and they called it the golden age of hip hop because it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, the shit we did back then from grassroots to just good, just basic, basic, basic situations just falling out the sky. <sighs> if it happens again, it'll definitely be a miracle. But life mm-hmm. usually don't strike twice in the same place. I mean, mm-hmm. everything was brand new to technology. I mean, drum yeah. machine just got invented. Yeah. Drum machine, we, we would not have been in the music industry if we had to b- hire musicians because nobody knew how to produce a record but a drum machine uh-huh. allowed you to make mistakes perfect them just like right now a lot of cats if it wasn't for this these uh programs a lot of cats wouldn't be wouldn't be producers because you had to have some talent with a drum machine mm. nowadays when you can move your notes around and make if you mess them up you can just move them, move them around no big deal Man. just move your notes around so you know, you had to have a little bit more to offer musically and talent-wise. Not saying they're not, they're not as talented right now, but it was it was a lot different, dude. A lot different. Mm, damn, man. Well, uh, we got a couple of questions. Let's try to squeeze both of them in if possible. If not, we'll get to them next week. The other one next week, I promise. 